Please welcome the next Vice President of the United States, Senator J.D. Vance. Why don't we liberate these United States? We're the ones who need it worse. Let the rest of the world help us for change And let's rebuild America first Our highways and bridges are falling apart Who's blessed and who has been cursed? There's things to be done all over all right. the world Wow! Well... It's great to be in South Philly, isn't it? So here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say a few brief words, and I, I thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I'm gonna introduce some folks who have been affected by Kamala Harris's disastrous policies, because I think it's important to put a human face on the disaster that has been Kamala Harris and to remind the American people, this is why we need President Donald J. Trump, because normal people benefit when he's the President of the United States. But first, let me say just a few words, and then we'll take some questions from reporters. But let me, let me just start out by saying that Kamala Harris has been such a disaster as vice president of this country that everywhere she goes, chaos and uncertainty follow. We have got a war in Europe. We have got a war in the Middle East that threatens to spiral out of control. We've got chaos in the world financial markets. Everything that Kamala Harris touches has been a disaster, and we have got to kick her out of the United States government, not give her a promotion. Now, now, today in particular, I've already met with some people who have really suffered because of Kamala Harris's border policies. And let's just count the ways in which our border czar opened the American southern border. On day one, Kamala Harris suspended deportations. On day one, Kamala Harris stopped the Remain in Mexico policy that kept our country safe. On day one, border czar Kamala Harris, she stopped construction of the southern border wall. And on day one, she proposed amnesty for millions of illegal aliens in this country. And we know that every time Kamala Harris took an action to open the American southern border, it is families like many of those who stand behind me today who have suffered the most. And, and now, for the past two weeks, Kamala Harris has been saying that she wants a promotion. I think we ought to say to Kamala Harris, you're fired and rehire Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. Now, I, 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 I want to get everybody's name here, but before I do, I, I just want to say I'm not going to be able to introduce everybody I've spoken to just this morning and early this afternoon. But you've got people who have lost loved ones just in the last few weeks to gun violence because we won't lock up violent criminals in this country anymore, thanks to the policies of Kamala Harris. You've got children who have been orphaned, who have been bouncing around foster homes because Kamala Harris's policies allow this terrible fentanyl into our country that orphan these poor kids. And you've got parents who have lost loved ones, who have lost children, because we keep on allowing the Mexican drug cartels to turn our country into a drug trafficking zone. It is normal people who suffer when Kamala Harris refuses to do her job, and it is normal people who stand to benefit the most when we re-elect Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. And that's what we're gonna do, right? That's exactly what we're gonna do. So I want to make sure I get these names right, but I, I want to thank Dave Torres for being here. Great American. Amanda Navarro is here with us. We've got Jack Kilkus and we've got Terry Stark. Again, these are people whose loved ones have suffered and some cases died because Kamala Harris doesn't do her job. And I want to invite a few people up to just give some personal testimony. And before I do, I want to say what amazing personal courage it takes to be here and to be willing to offer your personal story. I know it's not easy, and I know this is sad, heart-wrenching stuff, but the American people need to understand 
what are the consequences of screwing up this election. And so I appreciate you all being here very much. So first, I want to start with Denise and Mike Trask. Trask, you guys going to come up here? Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you for having us today. Our daughter Jacqueline is the oldest of our five children. Jack was always a fearless, free spirit who was full of adventure and sometimes mischief. I'm proud to selfishly boast that we've raised our kids with good morals, values, and kind hearts. We are a God-loving and God-fearing family that never would have imagined we'd go through the devastation and torment of addiction. Yet here it was, directly impacting our lives. It crept right under our front door into our home and had no regard that our baby was a good girl, that our family was a grateful and prayerful unit, or even that my own husband was a Philadelphia narcotics officer. We learned fast that addiction knows no race, no religion, no economic status, and has no limits. It was devastating to endure, the most helpless thing imaginable as her parents. We tried any and everything possible. After a few years of complete hell, Jack reached her bottom. She admitted herself into an amazing program called FRAT, First Responders Addiction Treatment, at the Livingren Foundation. Jacqueline was an EMT. She got herself clean and sober, and we got our daughter back. She lived two beautiful years in sobriety and shared her story at numerous meetings in and around Philadelphia. She touched people when she spoke. If you were blessed to be in her company, you'd never forget her. Her heart was gold and fair and never critical. Life was amazing once again, once again, for Jack and for our family. That is until May 1st, 2016, when she had a lapse in judgment when she had an awful trigger, and when she had tunnel vision of only one thing, and bought herself a bag of heroin that, of course, was laced with fentanyl. And our 26-year-old daughter died of an accidental overdose in her car, in a mall parking lot, in broad daylight, alone. We like to think of Jack's passing as God's way of relieving, of relieving her from her pain, it helps us cope with our constant heartache and great loss. We imagine that he saw how broken she was and that he freed her from the struggles she was battling with. He took her home with him, and one day, we will all be reunited with her. That's, there's great comfort in that. Our added note here to Jacqueline's story is yes, heroin, cocaine, alcohol, pills, all of the street drugs out there are lethal in and of themselves. But the fentanyl coming right into our country, our cities and our neighborhoods, is killing thousands and thousands of people every day. It's tremendously deadly and we're losing our loved ones at an alarming rate because of its potency and infestation into the illegal drug market. The border travesty that this current administration has neglected, allowed, and even supported is infuriating and quite frankly, complete lunacy on multiple levels. I pray we get ahead of it. I pray our borders are secured once again. I pray for all those affected by addiction and all of its ugliness. I pray it never touches my other children who work every day as public servants for this city as a police officer and a medical professional. And lastly, I, I pray that our country is restored again, safe again, respected again, economically stable again, and elects our former President Donald J. Trump again, along with U.S. Senator J.D. Vance as his vice president in November. Lord, hear our prayers, and let's make America great again. Uh, thank you both so much for that testimony. And I now want to introduce Geraldine Briggs, who again is another American who has suffered because of these terrible policies that we have. So, uh, thank you to the Trask for your incredible courage. And Geraldine, would you come say a few words too? Yes, 
I would just like to start by saying thank you in advance for listening with an open heart and not a dismissive ear. As a young melanated woman from Philadelphia, I feel compelled to address the opioid crisis that is affecting our communities in Philadelphia and a city that I love has been impacted by crime. I've watched an incline in numbers of homeless people, drug addicts, and murderers than ever before, dare I say it, since President Biden has been in office. Democrats soft on crime policies have led to the, to the city I've once knew to become unrecognizable. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with witnessing opioid addiction firsthand. For many years now, I have a brother that battles with this addiction. Today, way more than before, it's too easily accessible, which means it doesn't stop in our communities. These are not racially profiled drugs. The rehabilitation centers prove that. This crisis knows no demographic, income, family history. It affects millions nationwide. Democrats claim to have cleaned up the streets in Philadelphia, but it has not worked. The border crisis has led to an influx of drugs coming across the border and impacting families like mine throughout the city. This crisis has gotten even worse under Biden-Harris. Biden and Harris are not doing anything to help us. What would it change under Kamala? What happens when it hits your neighborhoods, your homes? My mother keeps Norcane in her closet just in case my brother does not awake on his own after taking drugs. You can purchase opioids from just about anywhere besides in-store purchase. And what are Democrats doing about this? Nothing. Democrats have and continue to turn a blind eye, bringing the crime rates all the way up. People are killing to steal it. People are killing to maintain territory selling it. And people are killing themselves using it. I'm sorry. Murders are going unsolved. People continue to die. A lot of us continue to live in fear in our communities. We need leaders who will restore our once beautiful cities and towns. We need leaders who will not make us walk into a drugstore and have to ask an attendant to get an Advil, everyday items, out of locked glasses because the store gets robbed every day. We need President Donald Trump and Senator J.D. Vance to be our next president and vice president, or our beloved Philadelphia will continue to spiral. This has to end, and I am proud to be one of the voices that stand against it. Thank you, um, Senator, uh, Senator Vance, I'm sorry. And um, thank you, Donald Trump, please. I really, really hope we win this and I really, really have faith in this. Thank you so much. It's tough not to admire the courage of the two families behind me, but I have to ask, why is it necessary? Why are they suffering? And the answer is because we have a leadership that is failing them. I want to tell my own personal story here because it touches on a little bit of what they talked about. You know, I, I remember when my own mom struggled with addiction and my grandmother raised me for a big chunk of my early life. And I remember after one particularly bad overdose, sitting beside her bed and being just angry that mom had taken this stuff to begin with. 
but then just desperately hoping and praying, Jesus, please let her wake up from this. And that's what addiction does to our families. It sort of combines this incredible frustration, but also we still love the people who suffer and we still want them to get better even when we're frustrated when they take a wrong turn. But what I got with my mom, who's been clean and sober for nearly 10 years now, thank you. And, and here in these stories, I almost feel guilty that I got it, but I'm so grateful that we got that second chance with my mom because now I've got, my oldest kid is seven years old and the only thing that he knows about mom is that she's the best grandma a boy could ask for. And I want more of you and more of the families here in Philadelphia to get that second chance with a loved one. I want them to have another opportunity to get back on that horse and get clean, knowing that sometimes they're gonna fall off the horse, but we wanna give them another opportunity to get back on. I want, I want a leadership that makes our streets safe enough where kids can make a mistake without it taking their lives from them. I want a country where our leaders put the interests of our citizens first, and I want Donald J. Trump to be back in the White House because he's the only person running who is gonna do exactly that. Now I wanna say just two things here before I take some questions from the media. The first is, again, thank you all for being here. Seriously, I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am We could do so much better. We could do so much better in this country with better leadership. We could give kids those second chances and we could make sure that the next time we're here in Philadelphia, we're hearing stories of triumph and hope of second chances successful and not of kids who have lost their lives. We've just got to have better leadership. But the second message I, I wanna leave you with, and this is for the media, because there are real stories to tell. There are real heartbreaks and real stories of hope and triumph. But there is a person who is asking, she's gonna be here later today, Kamala Harris, our border czar, is asking the American people to make her the next president of the United States. And yet for 16, thank you. And yet for 16 days and counting, the American media has been unable to ask her a question. Now agree or disagree with me and President Trump, nobody would dispute that we will go anywhere and we will talk to anyone and we will answer any question because, we will answer any question because we think we owe it to the American people to try to persuade them instead of running from them and that's what Kamala Harris has done. She is running a basement campaign where she refuses to go before the free press and actually answer their questions. Well, what kind of an election can you have if your own presidential candidate won't actually answer tough questions? And so I'd ask the American media to show a little bit of shame and to demand that before you give Kamala Harris your endorsement, and that's what the media has done, you at least force her to, ask some, to answer some tough questions and to stand before the American people and persuade them. Thank you. Kamala Harris ought to stand before the American people and persuade them of why she's the right choice. She ought to answer for the fact that she wanted to ban fracking and now she allegedly doesn't. She ought to answer for the fact that she wanted to defund the police. She ought to answer for the fact that she opened up the American southern border and she ought to answer for the fact that groceries are unaffordable and housing is unaffordable because of her policy. So to the media, please, for the love of God, do a better job. The American people demand it. Thank you you all for being here. God bless you guys. I love you all, and I'm especially grateful to the folks behind me for offering testimony so people can understand what the consequences are of failed leadership. God bless you all, and thank you. All right, all right, calm down. We've got to give the fake news a few questions here, though I'm sure we have, I'm, I'm sure we have 
hopefully a few honest journalists here in the audience. Ma'am. So first of all, the reason I didn't say a whole lot about Tim Waltz is because the Democrats have showed a willingness to pull a little switcheroo on us. So I don't even know if we're actually going to get Tim Waltz out of this campaign. And I think that a lot of us are asking ourselves, well, it's not going to be official until the Democrats actually nominate him, I guess, at their convention next week. So that's the first reason. The second reason is, look, Tim Waltz's record is a joke. He's been one of the most far left radicals in the entire United States government at any level. But I think that what Tim Waltz's selection says is that Kamala Harris has bent the knee to the far left of her party, which is what she always does. Kamala Harris listened to the Hamas wing of the party. She selected Tim Waltz, a guy who wants to ship more manufacturing jobs to China, who wants to give illegal aliens driver's license, and who wants to make the fentanyl crisis that we just heard about so much worse because he refuses to do his job and actually make it easier for American citizens and not illegal aliens to live a good life. So I think what it says is that Kamala Harris is running as a San Francisco liberal, she is governed as a San Francisco liberal, and she's chosen a running mate who will be a San Francisco style liberal. The last thing that I'll say about Tim Waltz is, to her credit, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz do make an interesting team because if we remember the rioting in the summer of 2020, Tim Waltz was the guy who let rioters burn down Minneapolis and then Kamala Harris was the one who bailed the rioters out of jail. So there's an interesting team in that sense. <laughs> Sir. First of all, people well, if you build a 100-foot wall, you're going to have a lot fewer illegal aliens coming into this country, and it's obvious, and it worked when Donald Trump was president. Look, no one has ever said a wall keeps out 100% of illegal aliens, but if it keeps out 98%, I'd say we're doing pretty good. And that means less fentanyl, less drugs, and less crime coming into our community. So... I was, I was at the border just a few days ago. Um, it's, it's a lot hotter down there in South Arizona than it is here in Philadelphia. And I remember seeing the slats of border wall just sitting on, sitting on the ground. And why are they sitting on the ground instead of being constructed? Because Kamala Harris said you're not allowed to construct border wall anymore. That means more fentanyl in South Philly. That means more orphaned children. That means more suffering Americans. And we can't let Kamala Harris forget it. Ma'am. Could you repeat the beginning of that? I missed the first one. No, I absolutely want to debate Tim Walls, but I want to debate him actually after he's actually officially the nominee. And I did call him and congratulate him and, and, and offered him my best wishes. I think that's the polite thing to do. But look, would it shock me if the Democrats pulled another switcheroo? No, it wouldn't. So look, we're gonna wait until they actually nominate Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz before we do any debates. And then of course, we wanna have a robust debate again because we believe the American people have the right to have their political leaders try to persuade them. And that is what's so scandalous about Kamala Harris's basement campaign, 16 days she has been the presumptive nominee of the Democrat party, zero times she has sat for a real me media interview. That's a disgrace. Nobody should ask to lead the American people unless she's willing to answer tough questions. And if she's too afraid of the American media, how is she possibly going to deal with Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping and a bunch of world leaders all over the, the globe? J yeah, j go ahead. I can hear you now. My, my message to voters who want to see less division, look, I want to see less division as well, but division starts at the top. And you saw Donald Trump, who took a bullet two weeks ago and called for national calm and unity. That is the kind of unifying message that we need in this country.
But we're not going to have real unity in the United States of America when you have a border czar who's running as president of the United States who welcomed cartels and welcomed drugs into our communities. The division comes from bad leadership. We fix the bad leadership, and I think we have a great country from people from all political walks of life. Unity will come, but only after we get rid of the bad leadership. And you asked about the strategy. Look, the strategy is simple. We know that there are six or seven states that are gonna decide this election. We think that it is shameful that Kamala Harris is running from tough questions from the media. So I'm gonna to go to every single battleground state that I can. I'm gonna to answer tough questions. I'm gonna to talk to people because that is the minimum that you should do if you wanna be the president or vice president of the United States of America. In, in the red, man. And then, and then behind you in the, in the white shirt, yeah. <laughs> well, look, the only thing I'll say about Josh Shapiro is I genuinely, <laughs> there's some fans out here, I genuinely feel bad that for days, maybe even weeks, the guy actually had to run away from his Jewish heritage because of what the Democrats are saying about him. I think that's scandalous and disgraceful. Whatever you believe or dis, whatever you, whatever disagreements on policy you have about somebody, the fact that that race, the vice presidential race on the Democratic side, became so focused on his ethnicity, I think is absolutely disgraceful and it's insulting to Americans, whatever background you're from. But look, I'm not relieved or non relieved about who Kamala Harris chose because look, Kamala Harris is the problem. Kamala Harris was the border czar. Kamala Harris has had the policies that have caused so many people to needlessly suffer. We're gonna run against Kamala Harris because she's the problem and she's the one asking to be the people's president of the United States. Though I say, she's not actually asking. She's given teleprompter speeches, she's given scripted remarks, she's not actually doing the bare minimum we should expect of a person who wants to be the people's president. Yeah. First, Tim Walls, um, the argument that was made for him is that he will help Democrats in the Midwest um, with white working class voters, perhaps. Can you address that argument? Look, I'm skeptical that whoever the VP nominee is, most people are voting at the top of the ticket. But here's the thing about Tim Walls. Look, Tim Walls is a guy who wants to take children away from their parents if the parents don't agree to do sex changes and the school wants to. That's crazy, right? A fundamental violation of parental rights. Tim Waltz is a guy who wants to ship more and more American manufacturing jobs to China. He said it on camera in the name of the green energy scam. Well, if you care about the environment, and I certainly do, why are you gonna ship American manufacturing jobs to the dirtiest economy in the world? Why wouldn't you keep them right here in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, in the places that really need it? This is a guy who, when rioters were burning down the biggest city in Minnesota, was actively cheering them on. You think the black business leaders in Minneapolis are grateful, the working class business leaders are grateful that Tim Waltz allowed rioters to burn down their businesses? You think that people are grateful to have a guy who wants to ship manufacturing jobs off to China? There's no way the American people are gonna buy it. It just doesn't make sense. And again, the biggest problem with the Tim Waltz pick, it's not Tim Waltz himself, it's what it says about Kamala Harris. That when given an opportunity, she will bend the knee to the most radical elements of her party. That's exactly what she did here. That's what she's going to keep on doing as president. That's why we got to elect Donald J. Trump, president of the United States. And I'll, I'll take just a couple more here and then we got to hit the road. Thank you all. Can you start that again? Well, look, I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're white guys from the Midwest. I guess there are similarities there. But what's different is the actual ideas about how best to serve people, white, black, or anything else, in the Midwest and everywhere else, right? I, I, I can't believe this is a guy who tries to claim that he stands for working people, and yet he wants to pursue energy policies that are gonna ship everybody's job to China. In, in some ways, what Tim Waltz represents is doubling down on failed 30 years of leadership in this country where we don't make enough of our own stuff, we don't use enough of our own workers to make enough of our own stuff. We rely on everybody else for energy instead of American citizens, and then we throw open the southern border to make our communities less livable and less safe. He is the double-down choice for failed leadership, and again, 
Kamala Harris selected him. I don't know why, but I think it's because she's fundamentally a radical herself and she wanted a partner in crime. Ma'am. Could, could you, could, yeah, just start again, sorry. Let's talk a little bit about foreign policy. Can you tell me how you handle the two largest conflicts in the world today, that being in Ukraine and also in Israel? Not so much what has been done wrong, but what we would do going forward. Well, I think the most important thing you got to do is kick Kamala Harris the hell out of office, right? I mean, that's going to make the world a lot more safer and more secure. Look, in, in, in Israel, I think it's actually very simple. What we all want, meaning the Israelis and any American with an ounce of common sense, which I think is 99% of our country, we want the war to end, we want Hamas to be destroyed, and then we want the Israelis to be able to build a peace process with the Sunni Arab neighbors to build a counterbalance to Iran. That's it, right? It's very simple. Now the problem is, Kamala Harris on the one hand says that she really cares about civilian casualties and really wants the war to end, and yet she refuses to give Israel the weapons that allow them to minimize civilian casualties and bring the war to a close end. It's the dumbest policy maybe in the history of American foreign policy to prolong this war, to promote the death of innocent civilians, and that is the Kamala Harris approach to the Middle East. Now, in Russia and Ukraine, I saw a report just a couple of days ago that the Ukrainians are running out of fighting men to actually staff the war. You've got to believe in peace and you've got to bring peace to that region of the world. Russia would have never invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump was president. And now, thank you. And now we are where we are. And if you want to bring peace to that region, you need a negotiator who Vladimir Putin respects. Does anybody here and obviously we're in a biased crowd, but does anybody here actually think that Vladimir Putin respects Kamala Harris? No. She's afraid of all of you. She sure as hell isn't gonna be able to sit in an audience with Vladimir Putin and push for a reasonable peace. So we've got to have a person who understands diplomacy, who understands that America does have negotiating leverage, that shuts off energy in places or shuts off access to energy in places where you have bad guys running the energy policy, rebuilds the American energy sector, allows us to project power overseas, and makes Vladimir Putin know that we gotta bring peace and you gotta have a respect for an American president who can do that. And then we'll do one more question. Well, look, it's ultimately President Trump's decision, but President Trump has shown again and again, as much as the media accused him of being a wild cowboy, President Trump believes in the power of diplomacy. Love a guy or hate a guy, disagree with a foreign leader or agree with him, you've got to be willing to engage in diplomacy. The Kamala Harris approach of saber rattling while the world goes to hell has clearly not worked. We've got a war in the Middle East, we've got a war in Europe, we've got threatened war in East Asia. Kamala Harris's approach has failed. Donald Trump's approach delivered world peace. I think I know who I'm supporting in 2024. One final question. Go ahead, ma'am. Look, the plan with people who have come to the country illegally is you've got to be willing to deport some of them. I mean, it's, it's not, this is not rocket science. If you have, look, if you've got 20 million illegal aliens in this country, not all of them are, are bad people. Most of them are probably very good people. But if you break the law to come into this country, you've got to be willing to send some of those people back. That's the Donald Trump approach. And if you don't do that, And if you don't do that, you don't have a real border, and the people who will suffer the most are the people right behind me who are gonna to continue to have their communities poisoned by the fentanyl that the Mexican drug cartels bring across that open border. Now, you asked about the remarks that I made that were, you said that they were offensive to millions of women. Well, here, here's, here's what I'd say. This cat lady loves you. Thank you, ma'am. I love you too. What I said is very simple. I think American families are good and government policy should be more pro-family. Now, if the media wants to get offended about a sarcastic remark I made before I even ran for the United States Senate, then the media is entitled to get offended. You know what I'm offended by? I'm offended that normal Americans can't afford grocery prices. I'm offended that Kamala Harris opened up the American southern border and allowed fentanyl to come into our communities. 
and I'm offended that she wants to be the people's president, but she won't even answer tough questions. That's what I'm offended by, and I think that's what most Americans are offended by, too. And I guess on that note, I should say, Thank you all for having me. It's great to be here. If I can, if I can ask you to just do one thing. We, we have got, we have got, thank you. We have got an incredible out, amount of momentum. We've got an incredible amount of capacity to win this race, but it's gonna require every single one of us doing everything we can. So, our national motto is in God we trust. God tells us to hope and not despair. So let's get out there, let's work the phones, let's knock on the doors, let's get everybody out there to vote, and let's reelect Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. I know I can count on you. God bless you guys, I love you. Thank you. Thank you.